video will demonstrate how to configure an IQ satellite program to use automatic weather source ET adjustments. We want to start off by creating a new weather source. So I'm going to hit the uh, weather source and then add button. And for this I'm, demonstration I'm going to use IQ global weather and hit OK. I'm going to enter a name for this weather source as Winchester, California. I'm going to choose the location and enter the zip code for uh, Winchester, California. I'm going to hit the Find button and it's going to come up with a list of locations around that area. I'm going to select Winchester and hit OK. It's also asking for an elevation and I looked this up online and it's 1376 uh, foot elevation. I'm going to hit OK and IQ is now asking me permission to retrieve historical uh, weather data and it'll uh, default back two weeks so I'm going to hit OK and IQ will go out through the internet collect uh, weather data for this location. You'll see for each of the dates the numbers in black here represent uh, ET inches. This is the inches of water that were lost due to evaporation and transpiration or ET for that calendar day where you see small blue numbers, that's rainfall amounts for that calendar day. I'm going to hit OK and go over under satellites. I'm going to select the configure button and I'm going to open an existing satellite that I have already have. And I'm going to go to edit configuration and stations and I'm going to select a weather source. In this case the new weather source, the Winchester, California uh, weather source that we created. And I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to go over to the Program tab. And I'm going to uh, convert the A program, which is which I've named as TURF. And so I'm going to click on the TURF hyperlink up above. I'm going to see that the TURF program, Program A, is currently set up for no program adjustment. I'm going to change that to Weather Source ET by selecting that uh, radio button. And I'm going to click on the Change Landscape Information link that's uh, presented. On this screen I'm going to enter site information that I've collected uh, from the physical uh, irrigation site location. First I'm going to select plant material type. In this case it's cool season turf grass. Under the soil type field I'm going to select clay loam which is the soil type that I have for that site. You'll see it's uh, provided some default information including root depth. You, if uh, you took a soil probe out, you want to measure the actual root depth and enter that here. So adjust this up or down to what's uh, actually there. It's recommended a 40% management allowed depletion uh, level. That is the uh, soil moisture depletion level that will trigger irrigation refill. In this case, when 40% uh, of the soil moisture has been depleted, it will trigger your uh, irrigation refill. The next one down is refill percentage. This is the target soil moisture after you're done irrigating. And in this case, um, based on the type of site, I'm going to change this to 0%. So it's going to take it all the way to full when I'm done um, uh, done irrigating. Uh, other defaults on the screen, uh, we're going to leave uh, the way they are and press OK. One note here, notice that it starts the soil moisture balance. Uh, you want to check where the soil starting soil moisture balance, you may need to adjust that. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I'm going to press OK. From the program screen, next thing I need to do is select the watering day cycle. This says select allowed days to start this program. Um, uh, the days, the more days per week that you give it, to allow starts, the more efficient it will be. These aren't the days that will actually start. It will reminder it will only start on days when we've depleted the soil moisture down to uh, 40 percent. I'm going to leave the start time that I had in here for my minute space program of 3 a.m. and I'm going to press OK. 
And the next thing we want we want to do is actually uh, we're going to click um, on station one, um, and we're going to uh, adjust this. Uh, zone one was rotors, so I'm in the rotor field. It's actually the 5,000 MPR 35 um, full circles, so I'm going to select that from the list. Operating pressure is 45 psi, and the spacing is 33 by 32 um, foot uh, rectangular spacing. And you'll notice it's coming up with a projected runtime of 22 minutes 53 seconds. That's the number of minutes and seconds that it will take for the um, irrigation system to be on on this zone to take the soil moisture balance from our 40% depletion trigger level up to full. I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, other turf stations. Zone 2 has rotary nozzles. So I'm going to select that from the list. And it's half circle 1724s, 45 psi operating pressure. And the spacing is 22 by 22. I'm going to select OK. Notice it came up with 21 minutes 36 seconds as a uh, base runtime. Third zone has spray heads. So I'm going to select the spray nozzle category. And we have HE van 12 foot 180s operating at 30 psi. And it's 12 by 12 uh, spacing. And it's coming up with a 10 minute 2 second runtime. So I'll hit OK. Uh, last zone that's under the turf grass zone is uh, subsurface drip tubing. So I'm going to select the drip line category. It's 12 inch on center uh, on tube emitter spacing. It's the 0.91 uh, uh, flow rate. And I have the rows of tubing spaced 12 inches apart. So it's recommending a 10 minute 50 second runtime. Okay. So that's the base run times. Forecasted column you'll see is takes into account any adjustments, whether they're program level adjustments or station level adjustments. Also, it's looking at the current soil moisture balance. This would be the number of minutes and seconds that it would take for the, to return the current soil moisture balance to um, uh, my target refill percentage, which in this our case was. Uh, completely full. If I click on the ET checkbook link, this will show me my initial uh, starting balance. And after I run the system for a few days, you'll see um, entries in the checkbook. Um, deposits will be any irrigation or rainfall events that happened, and withdrawals are the daily ET values. And it'll keep a running balance. The bottom section down here where it says forecasted irrigation, this is basically a forecast of what the system will run in the future. So this will tell you the estimated date and amount on that date of irrigation for the future. Um, and uh, this um, is helpful to understand where you're, um, uh, where you're at today and uh, the next possible day it will irrigate. If I do want to change the current soil moisture balance, I can press on the add entry link and I can force it to go to um, the MAD level, which would force it to irrigate tonight, a refill uh, level, which would basically top it off in our case, um, or I can adjust the uh, soil moisture balance uh, by entering either a deposit or withdrawal um, to adjust the soil moisture balance.